Baba Ali Show, Episode 8, Shame Grenades and Fitna Bombs. There is this common trend I've seen among Muslims and you often find in the comment section of YouTube videos, Twitter, and all over Facebook. It's when people post nonsense comments trying to make themselves look pious while attempting to attack the piety of others. Not sure what it's called. I've never been able to put my finger on it. It's almost like trolling, but it's worse. Some people call it shame grenades while others call it fitna bombs. I call it the topic of today's episode and I'm about to put these people on blast. Let's do this. <laughs> have confused the masses and speakers are forced to be politically correct rises one man one voice who changed everything hey man why are you all serious this is just a podcast <laughs> let's talk about what they don't want to talk about Welcome to the Baba Ali Show. I'm your host, Baba Ali. What's that in your hand? Shame grenade. Why do you have a shame grenade? I was going to throw it. Why? Because I want attention. I want everyone to think I'm awesome. You don't need to do that. Everyone's benefiting from the article. Why ruin it? Yeah, I want everyone to look at me. I want to look pious. Shame grenades don't make you look pious. They make you look delusional and desperate. What about fitna bombs? I like throwing those. <laughs> What's a fitna bomb? That's when you try and take the focus away from the positive message from the video by throwing comments that start fitna, fitna, fitna. Like one time there was this girl making a video about teaching girls how to put on hijab. And I was like, hey, how come you never talk about halal meat in your hijab videos? That just proves you don't like halal meat. Fitna, fitna, fitna. There's a lot of crazy people who hang out in the comments section of the internet. I'm serious. I sometimes wonder if they ever read what they're typing. I don't know if these people are just trolls with a bad sense of humor or if they're losers who have nothing but a lot of free time. I mean a lot of free time. Or maybe they're really delusional. I've yet to solve that mystery. Today's guest actually made a video calling these people out. His name is Omar Osman and he's a founding member of Muslim Matters, Qalam Institute, Muslim Strategic Initiative, and Debt-Free Muslims. He's also the man behind a new fiqh of social media class, which is something that we definitely need today. Welcome to the Baba Ali Show. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. For those who have not heard about the shake and bake shame grenade videos, please Google it. It looks like a PowerPoint presentation, but it's way more than that. It's something that I've never heard anyone speak about. I mean, I couldn't really put my finger on it either, but it's something <laughs> very interesting. Can you tell us more about it and what it is? So it's something I've noticed online for a long time. And same thing, I couldn't put my finger on it. Every time any kind of issue comes up, people are leaving the weirdest, most random comments, and they're so negative, but they're cloaked in religiosity, so you kind of start taking it seriously. But I finally put my finger on it when I read an article by a Christian author talking about the Jesus juke. Okay. <laughs> that was basically, he was at the airport and he posted a picture of someone doing push-ups while they were waiting for their flight. And people started respond, responding to him saying, we wish people were as dedicated to Jesus as they were about exercise. <laughs> And so he goes, he goes, why is it that every time you post anything, people follow up with comments like that? And he goes, it's like they detonated a shame grenade and it just kind of destroyed everything within its radius. And I was like, oh my God, that's exactly what it is that I'm noticing. And I've seen that so many times. If you make dua for a certain country and you forget to make a dua for a different country, people will put you on blast for that. Exactly. It's no matter what you say or do, there's always going to be someone that is upset or offended that you didn't mention whatever their cause, country problem issue whatever it might be and the thing is they come across as being religious people not like typical trolls you see on the internet which they're just trying to start fitna that they're coming under the disguise of hey i'm trying to be religious here and i'm better than you guys so let me tell you what you guys are doing wrong it's this weird yeah it's it's typical trolling behavior i mean if you look at any kind of trolling online it's the exact same thing but with just that cloak on it and so i think the mistake that we've made for a long time is that we tend to take it more seriously than we should because of that have you seen any negative impact on like people you know or yeah so i mean one of the sites that i work with is muslimmatters.org and you know we deal with it a lot in the comments section and we've even had people that were considering writing for us or even that were writing for us uh basically pulled back because of the excess negativity that they would get. Wow. Um, 
I've even felt it myself. There's, you know, you you almost check yourself like four or five times before posting something just because of how it might be perceived or how it might be responded to. I'm a victim as well. You know, I've done nearly 100 videos on YouTube and I've had my fair share of shame grenades, fitna bombs and whatever else you want to call it because <laughs> they constantly use, as you said, terms you came up with or used in your video, spiritual blackmail, toxic negativity. And I didn't know what it was. At one point, I actually almost felt guilty. It's like, am I actually doing this stuff? Am I doing it wrong? I, I start qu Honestly, I, I start questioning yeah. myself because they come across as like religious people that are trying to correct me, but it's hard to think that their in intention is pure. It just, it rubs you the wrong way. And, and this is the thing is that if we take like the Islamic concept of nasiha, right? Of giving someone advice. Yeah. There's always an intended outcome with that advice. And everyone who's on the receiving end of these types of comments, they never change their behavior for the better because of it. At most, all they accomplish is people who are doing good work will stop doing it. It's such a shame too. I made a video regarding, it was a promotion for a networking event we were going to have here in Southern California. And and I got a response saying, how could you have a networking event when the people in Syria are suffering like the way they are? See, for me, it, it took a long time to kind of reach this kind of clarity for myself. But I realized this is basically the embodiment of what a lot of people call like a scarcity mentality. Where there's, you know, it's like if you take money, for example, there's a fixed amount of money in the world. And so if it goes somewhere else, I'm going to lose out on it right? Basic example is there's a masjid and now another masjid is opening up five miles away and everyone freaks out saying, oh my God, our fundraising money is going to be split up and we're not going to be able to do our project anymore. Okay. And so, you know, they're, they're basically assuming that there's only like X amount of money in the community. And if another masjid opens up, we're not going to meet our expenses next year. It's so ridiculous because you're discounting the fact that there's things like baraka that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will provide. Exactly. Right? And so that's with money. Now with these things online, it's the same thing, but they extend that mentality to things like even compassion. So I have a fixed amount of compassion in my heart. If I'm compassionate toward, let's say Syria, now it means I'm not going to be compassionate toward Pakistan, wow. right? Because there's only a fixed amount of emotion that I have. And so if I put it in one place, I can't put it in the other. And it's, it's so ridiculous, but that's, you know, that's literally their mentality. How can I tell the characteristics of these type of people I'm dealing with? I hate to say it, but online is almost like very obvious sometimes. And this is not to like pick on people for their social media profiles or followings or whatever. But you'll find that it's people that have like 10,000 tweets and five followers. Okay. <laughs> I mean, and, and the reason that I mentioned it that way is because what it shows is that they have not built relationships with anyone even online. Right. They're just spouting off, saying whatever they want. And it's like a one way conversation. The sincere advice, you know that it's sincere because it's, it's the same way in person. It's someone that approaches you politely, oftentimes privately. They'll discuss it with you in a reasonable manner rather than just firing something off, just hoping to embarrass you or shame you in public. And that's one of the things that really bothered me is like none of these people ever contacted me personally. Instead, they decided to put me on blast on the comment section. So it's really hard for me to think that these people are actually sincere. And it's, and you can tell because they, you know, as religious as they act, they bypass so many of the basic teachings in our religion, right? So making excuses for people is an example. So you'll see people online saying, oh, you're talking about country X, but I've never heard you address this other country. And it's almost like, have you listened to every single speech this person has ever given both online and in person to reach that conclusion? It's impossible. An article that I read regarding this on Muslim Matters, it says one of the characteristics is that if I haven't seen it, it must not exist. Exactly. They, they want you to give you 70 excuses for their cause but they can't give you one excuse for you right it's a double standard and the the reason they do that is because they think that their issue is so important that they can break the rules what about this other aspect i see oftentimes the sheikhs are are victims of this as well they are guilty until they're proven innocent yep <laughs> so the, the sheikh, if he says something or does something, by default, you are guilty. Now you have to come on Twitter. You have to come on Facebook and explain yourself. Otherwise, you're guilty. And these are the people that are applying judgment on everybody. How is that even fair? It doesn't make sense whatsoever. It doesn't because, ex you know, if you extend that out to its most logical conclusion, that means, let's say, for example, there's, you know, some humanitarian catastrophe happens in Brazil. Okay. 
Okay. And so now a famous sheikh who's got a large following online posts, you know, let's make dua for the people of Brazil. It's almost as if he has to follow that up with like a hundred more status updates listing every single country. <laughs> Just say like, hey guys, I promise I didn't forget about anybody else. It's so sad that we've gone to that point where the sheikh, he's basically put in the corner and he has to defend himself. And you know, and the thing is, it's not just the neglect aspect of it. Like, oh, you mentioned one, you didn't mention the other. There's something even worse than that that's kind of implied. And that's basically my tragedy or my issue is more important than yours. I wonder sometimes if these people are even conscious of what they're doing. Because it it doesn't really make sense. I mean, I, when they press the forward button or the send button, are they thinking what they're doing? When they send me a, a email or a text message that says, forward this to 10 of your friends, and if you don't, Shaitan wins. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> Shaitan wins if I don't forward this to 10 friends? It's like you are using spiritual blackmail to get what you want. And you're using Islam. You're twisting Islam to get what you want. And it, it's, it's wrong. And you know, this kind of behavior, it's I actually listened to an, an NPR story, I think it was, uh, somewhat recently. There was a story about a lady who basically some guy was trolling her online and she finally ended up getting in touch with him and confronting him about it. And he ended up apologizing to her and they kind of delved into the psychology of why he was trolling her like that. Basically what had happened was he was trolling her because she was a woman and she was speaking about certain issues. So he was just going at her online in a very vulgar and harsh way. But what it basically came down to was he was going through a really tough time in his life. And so he was just taking it out on the first target that he could find. I kind of see that same psychology online where people that are very frustrated or they're going through something difficult or maybe it's just even they're upset with their own level of religious practice. It's a way to kind of project some kind of piety and some kind of a win in their eyes that I'm doing something right or I'm doing something pious to make myself better. Wow. Do you know what really bothers me? One of their tactics is like they say, don't donate to this cause, <laughs> but donate to this cause. Yeah. I'm like, who puts these people in charge? Why does it have to be either this or that? And why can't it be both? It's like there's option A, there's option Option B, but we can't have option C. Either you guys are supporting our masjid or you're supporting their masjid. It's like, did you get invited to the meeting where they sat down and made the list? And then, yeah, who put you in charge of what's important, what's not? And the funniest thing is, is that even in our religion, there's not a precedent for everyone always working on the exact same cause, right? Throughout, even with the companions, you see everyone was focused on different things, contributing in different ways. And it's just very short-sighted to say that everyone has to only make one contribution or one issue. Yeah, and while we're talking about contribution, let me talk about, like, one of really bad charity tactic that's been used in fundraiser when they say, oh, whoever loves their mother will donate this money. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Yeah. I'm like, yeah, if you don't love your mother, we don't want your money. But if you love your mother, if you really love your mother, give us $10,000. And your mother's sitting next to you. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, what? Who is this guy? Where do you guys go? And you guys are supposed to be the religious people among us? Yeah. And I'm supposed to trust you when I give you this money because of the tactics you're doing? Come on now. See, it's that whole thing of, you know, understanding shame and guilt, right? So yeah. with it, you know, I always say that guilt is a good thing as long as it's between yourself and Allah. So whatever wrong I've done, I should feel guilty for it, right? That's part of our, that's part of our tradition. But for me to come and shame you into guilt, that's never constructive. It never produces any positive results. They make unattainable goals for piety. And you know, even in that fundraising situation, even if you went and donated like $10,000, at, for at least like a year after that, you would hate yourself for it. You'd be like, I wish I didn't donate to that guy or to that cause. Because you didn't do it for the right reasons. Exactly. The way that it made you feel, you regret it. So do you think these people lack sincerity? We can't say they lack sincerity, but they are very terrible at showing it. <laughs> <laughs> very well put. I was, I was, I was asking you a tough question and you give a very good answer, mashallah. You know, it's the, what bothers me is that they almost treat Islam as a joke. And this is some serious stuff. They forget that on the day of judgment, everything that you do, including the things that you do online and everything you, that you say, including the, the things that you say online, yep. you're going to be accountable for. Exactly. And it's, it's not just a joke. It's almost a game. They're literally chasing imaginary internet points. Likes. Like me. Exactly. There's nothing else that they get out of it. But people don't like them. They don't like these type of people where your goal is just to make everyone else look wrong. Because the reality is that we're all human beings and we all make mistakes. And I don't want to put someone out there, call someone out just because they make a mistake. You know, I've done a hundred videos. I attack ideas, not people. Right. What I feel bad is that these people actually attack people. They're not even attacking the idea. They're attacking the people. You have this sheikh or you have this public speaker or you have this public figure or this person who just gave a talk, a video, and the comment has nothing to 
you do what they're talking about. Let me give you another example. There is a, a sister who's a well-known speaker. And so she's got videos online where she's talking about, you know, different Islamic topics. And I remember reading an article where people were basically putting her on blast for it. And they actually took one of the videos. They did compare and contrast. So they con- compared one video to another. And they put screenshots and like, see, this proves that she's wearing makeup in this one and not that one. And they'll be like, and at 23 minutes and 41 seconds, you can see here she's smiling in like a suggestive manner. And like, it was, I was like... <laughs> I was like, whatever wrong <laughs> she may have done, you just eclipsed her by like a hundred times. <laughs> What's wrong with these people? And what it, is wrong with these people? And that's the thing. It's like, where did you realize this was like your productive use of time? And and that's like the weirdest thing, right? Like as much as they criticize the way that other people are wasting their time or their money and things like that, they're doing the exact same thing. Oh, I have one for you, Omar. Yeah. I made a video in one of my videos on YouTube. It's called Haterade. But I made an example in the video and people think like, where do you come up with this stuff? I'm like, this is real true stories i don't have to come up with stuff yeah i don't need comedy i just have to hang out with muslims <laughs> and have plenty of content so brothers contacted me basically and said ali you know we've been watching your videos me and a group of guys i guess they're the beard committee what we do is in each video we measure your beard what i'm not even joking <laughs> from video to video we watch your beard and we watch how much it grows and we are concerned what we do is we watch your videos and we measure your beard so we were writing this email to you to explain all the stuff i'm like are you kidding me that's very creepy <laughs> <laughs> This is what you do on your free time. You know how I responded to them? I said, brother, I wish I had as much as free time as you do. Yeah. You know, I have a lot of faults in myself. And yes, not every sunnah that I follow. And I hope, inshallah, that Allah guides me and corrects me. I'm not an example for human beings. And I never tell people to follow me. I have a lot to improve by myself. But for you guys to come here and to waste your time trying to look for my faults, have you corrected yourself? But let me tell you something else, right? The the key word here is that they emailed you. You don't run into these people in real life that often. There's a reason for that. And like, I always wonder, I'm like, these people that are saying all these things, does anyone in their mushroom even know who they are? You know why you don't see them in person? Why is that? Because they're hiding behind their keyboard. Exactly. <laughs> because of this cloak of being religious i think people have been kind of too scared to even call them out and now uh, hopefully after people listen to this podcast and they share it with others people will be more hesitant to do these type of things i was going to point out one other thing was a, uh, you know i'm going to rope back to the donations thing real quick okay right so people say things like you know if, if for example if you post a picture of eat yourself eating at a nice restaurant they'll be like oh you could have bought a cheaper meal and fed like so many other people <laughs> okay right? And so the thing is, is like, I would turn around and ask those people, where do they live? Have they downgraded their apartment? Have they sold their car and downgraded? Are they subsisting only on the bare minimum amount of food that they need to stay alive and mm. donating the rest of it? Yeah. If they're not, why are they holding everyone else to those standards? It makes you wonder because they're not coming public. Your life is public because you're the one giving information, you're advising, you are inviting people to come do some good. They're not doing anything except they're in the background criticizing what you are doing. Right. And, and again, the most that they ever end up accomplishing is the people that are doing good they stop doing it so it's just really like what are you hoping to get out of this now let me ask you a question have you ever been a victim of this as well yeah one of my khutbahs was posted online and actually in that video there's a couple of examples i had a khutbah online and someone asked they did the whole i'm not a scholar but why isn't the khutbah in arabic oh wow see i've heard that so many times i am not a scholar but yeah dot 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 it's like the whole i don't mean to be offensive but like no disrespect but that's basically saying like I'm about to offend you or disrespect you or pretend I'm a scholar. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like me saying, uh, "Hey, Baba Ali, why aren't you against human trafficking?" And you'll be like, "You'll be like what?" <laughs> and I'll be like, "I've never heard you speak about it. I've never heard you criticize it. And I'm not saying that you're in favor of it, but you know, it's a legitimate question because I've never heard you criticize it." <laughs> and then now all of a sudden, just by saying that, people will be like, "Oh my God." Why is Baba Ali in favor of human trafficking? And it just spreads like wildfire because I made an issue out of nothing. <laughs> this is so crazy. It sounds so crazy. I posted a status saying something like, you know, Alhamdulillah for being able to go into the grocery store and, you know, getting any kind of food that you want. And someone wrote back saying, no, brother, this is not a blessing. This is why people are getting fat. <laughs> I was like, okay, that's one way to look at it. I think there's a real, I don't know if it's like an emotional problem or personality problem where you immediately jump to the most negative possible thing you can think of in a particular situation. As you said, you had two people on Muslim Matters that are hesitant to write articles. And that's terrible because we lose out on those people. Right. One of the reasons I want to do this episode with you is so we can let people out there know the people who are trying to make a positive change in this Ummah to not let these t- people influence them. I mean, alhamdulillah, 
you've not only stood your ground, but you're calling these people out. And I am now joining your side of calling these people out with you. So we are more conscious of this stuff. And we put a little bit more shame in these people who are doing it. So they have shame in throwing out shame grenades. Exactly. It's it's all, you know, everything boils down to societal pressure, right? Yeah. If people are made to feel like, no, this behavior is wrong, maybe they'll think twice now before posting something like that. And, you know, the other thing that I have started doing is, you know, before people, like I said, because it was so religious, people still engaged them as if it was legitimate. Right. Yeah. Now, anytime someone says anything remotely like that, I just block them. <laughs> Like, it's done. I'm not dealing with it. Yeah. I remember I, this is like a really old school Islamic video, but there was a speaker talking and some guy in the audience stood up and started heckling him and basically trying to take over the speech. And the speaker was like, listen, brother, you know, we appreciate what you have to say. But if you'd like to tell the audience about what you want to talk about, then go print up your own flyers and get your own venue and we'll all show up and listen to you. <laughs> it's the whole thing of I can't get my own platform or I can't get anyone to listen to me. So I'm going to hijack what other people are saying. Exactly. And so you cut it off at the root. Just block them. Please tell us some advice that you have for our audience, for those who are dealing with people doing shake and bake and shame grenades. And So the best advice is is what I mentioned at the end of the video. It still resonates with me. And that's the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where he said that if you're planting a tree and the day of judgment is approaching, like finish planting the tree, right? Finish the, the work that you've started. So I would say whatever pursuits that someone has. And, you know, by the way, you're... The first episode of your podcast with Omar Reagan had a lot of these examples where he's saying, like, you know, we're trying to raise money for a movie and people are saying, oh, why aren't you doing something else? Why aren't you putting your efforts into this or that or the other? You know, the reality is we don't know what efforts Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to put barakah in, right? We don't know what the outcome of the work that we do is. We can only control whether we're sincere and trying to do it for the right reasons and Allah will determine how far that work goes. So whatever work you're doing, whatever cause it is, whatever project it is, Whatever your contribution that you want to make is, don't let anyone derail you, right? Even if the day of judgment is coming, finish planting that sapling, right? So don't let anyone derail the work that you're doing. Yeah. Second thing is, like I said, block the haters, plain and simple. The second someone, even if someone just says something you don't like, just block them. I mean, life is literally too short to waste time with these kind of things. So that's really, that's the two main things. And the third thing I would say is, as tough as it is, just maintain that attitude of positivity. And this is... Something I learned as far as things go online is understanding what they call critics math, right? So when someone writes a book, you go on Amazon and the author has like 400 five-star reviews and three one-star reviews. And you ask them about the feedback on the book and they'll have the one-star reviews memorized. <sighs> and they almost won't even look at the 400 positive comments, uh. right? So it's you have to reorient your frame and say like there's always going to be a supportive but silent majority of people with the work that you're doing, right? So make sure that you're catering to them. And the positive feedback that you're getting, don't, out of modesty and humility, don't discount it, right? Like, you have this thing where if you give a, let's say you give a khutbah or a speech, and people come up to you and they're like, oh, you know, Jazakallah khair, that was, your speech was really good, and it really affected me, and I learned, I learned a lot out of it. And what does the speaker do? They say, oh, no, 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 it sucked. It was garbage, right? When you do that, you're actually, the person that complimented you, you're actually telling them that they're an idiot for feeling like that. And that they're incorrect, right? So we, I think we have to, we really need like an Islamic discussion on how to receive praise and celebrate praise. Because we do a really good job of beating each other up all the time, but we don't do a good job of complimenting one another when we do something good. And and I think there's ways of doing that without being excessively praiseworthy or filling people's egos, but just kind of having some type of celebration of the good work that people are doing. I think we need to nurture that a little bit in our community. You have me thinking as you're speaking because I sometimes feel that I do that sometimes. And people oftentimes give me compliments and I, just to keep my own humility so I make sure I'm down to earth and never let an ego ever come inside of me. But now I understand the other side of it to be more conscious of it. Jazakallah khair. And there's, and you know, in that situation, like we have that dua of Abu Bakr where he said, you know, oh Allah, make me better than the people think of me and cover my faults. I don't remember the exact narration, but it was something along those lines of I'm not as good as what they're saying but make me better and cover up the faults. I think there's a balance in you, your private relationship with Allah has to be on lockdown in that sense. Yeah. But at the same time, we can't make the default to always be to bash and degrade everything, even if it's something good. You're so right. You know, you have this uh, class that you have called the Fiqh of Social Media. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so the, the Fiqh of Social Media project is basically, right now it's mostly an online ebook. If you go to Fiqh of Social dot media slash 40 hadith you'll get a free ebook with 40 hadith on social media and it's just you know 
It's all common sense. Have good intentions. Don't lie. Don't backbite. Don't cause drama. Don't make, don't mock people. Don't make fun of people for no reason. Right? These are all basic things in our religion. I think, I think the breakdown that we've had for a long time is that we've differentiated our online and offline life and we need to connect the dots again. And I think that's one thing that's actually contributed to this whole shame grenade phenomenon is people think that what they do online is a different world. It's like, you know, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Okay. It's, it's basically like what happens online stays online and it's different from my real life. I think that mentality gives people a lot more courage online. And I think we have to connect the dots and say our online and offline is now intermingled. Mm-hmm. Everything is connected. And so the behaviors that we're taught to have in person, we have to carry those into the online arena. And that's basically what this project is hoping to do. You've intrigued me very much, Marshall. I'm sure a lot of the listeners who are listening to this episode are also intrigued as well. So tell us how we can find you on the internet. Best way is actually Twitter at Ibn Abi Omar, I-B-N-A-B-E-E-O-M-A-R, or the FIC of Social Media email list at FIC, HTTP FIC of Social dot media. That's where I send out articles about FIC of Social Media and people can reply to me there. Alhamdulillah. Jazakallah khair. With that, I'd like to thank all the listeners who've been listening to this entire episode. You stay with us all the way to the very end, mashallah. I'll let you know that we're going to have more and more guests coming in each week, inshallah. So please go to babaalishow.com Leave your comment. Both myself and Omar want to see what you guys really think about and see if you guys are also victims of this as well. And remember, the whole podcast is on iTunes. So if you have an iPhone, you can just type in the word Baba Ali Show. It's right there. Subscribe and leave a review as well so others can discover the podcast. Jazakallah khair, Omar, for coming onto the show. It's been a pleasure having you. This is Baba Ali reminding you just in case you forgot. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.